we're going to make an 8K47 handguard. This is episode 3 of a series, so if you haven't seen the first two episodes, go check them out before you watch this one. In this episode, we're going to model this wooden shit that you hold with your left hand when you're shooting somebody with an 8K. If you want to learn more about the tools and techniques that I use when I'm modeling in Blender, then check out my new Blender modeling ebook, the link is below. The first thing that we have to create is this little piece of metal which separates the receiver from the handguard. And to do that, we're going to take a surface from the front of the receiver like this, duplicate it with Shift D and with right click, we're gonna snap it back into place. Then with P, we're gonna separate that to a new object. And now I don't want these bevels on these vertices on top here. So I'll join these two vertices with J and I'll delete the face on top. Now this is a perfect quad. Now I have to make this whole thing a bit wider so it's a little bit wider than the receiver. And I have to lower it a little bit so it's right around this lower edge here. From side view, I can see that it has to stop right over here. This is the beginning of the line on the receiver. Then we're going to extrude this outwards a little bit. And this edge here needs to be lowered a bit. Take the two edges at the top, bevel them. Then take the two edges at the bottom and also bevel those. Now place a 3D cursor on this edge in the middle. Duplicate a vertex from the side and with the 3D cursor as a pivot point, we're going to scale that vertex to zero on the Z axis. This way we can snap the 3D cursor to that vertex, which means we can select this bevel and scale it down towards the 3D cursor to make this part of the bevel thinner. I want this on both sides, so I'm going to make a cut through the middle. I'll delete the geometry on one side and then I'll duplicate this and mirror it to the other side. Then we're going to bevel these edges as well. This bevel needs to have a shape value of one and two segments. Now we can start modeling the wooden part of the handguard. So let's add a new plane and rotate it sideways. Scale the plane down so it fits inside this frame which we just created. Then we're going to extrude it up until this hole here. And we're going to add some loop cuts so that we can control this geometry and align it with the reference in the background. Now add a horizontal loop cut and push it all the way up. Then lower it just a little bit so it gets about halfway between the top line of this hole and the lower line of this hole. Then we're going to take this face and push it forwards a little bit. And we're going to extrude this face so that we have an extra vertex for creating this bevel over here. Once we've done that, we're going to extrude this and bring it to the middle, at which point we're going to delete this face and place a 3D cursor on this edge loop. So now we can select all this geometry, and with our 3D cursor as a pivot point, we're going to duplicate it with Shift D, right click to snap it back into place, and scale to minus one on the Y axis and correct the normals. We now have two edge loops in the same place, so we're going to select those, we're gonna press M and merge by distance. Now these vertices are gonna be connected. Then we're going to repeat the same thing over here in the middle. So we're going to duplicate all this geometry and bring it forward to the other side. Then just fill in the faces in the front and we're going to extrude those one more time so that we can create this little bevel at the bottom here. Now the lower part of the handguard is more or less ready and we're now going to select all of this geometry at the surface Shift D, right click, and scale to minus one on the Z axis to mirror it across the Z axis to bring it to the top. We might have to lower this down a little bit, and we also have to bring this forwards a little bit. Now we can just take this edge loop over here, and from side view, we're going to extrude it until we get to the top here. When we get to the top, we're going to scale this to zero on the Z axis, and then we're going to add a horizontal loop cut like this, which we're also going to flatten on the Z axis. We're going to select this edge loop at the top, but we're going to deselect the face in the front. Then we're going to go to W loop tool space, and this edge loop, we're just going to slide down a little bit with double G and then we're going to bring it back up with double G again. Now we're gonna select this top edge loop again, deselect the face in the front, W bridge edge loops. You have to be in edge select mode to be able to do this. Then place the 3D cursor over here, select the entire surface at the top. In edit mode, press T to get this menu on the side and activate your shear tool over here. Now we're just going to angle this a little bit and now we have the exact shape that we're looking for here. Correct the normals. And now we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier to make this look prettier. So select the object and press Ctrl-1 or Ctrl-2, Object Shade Smooth, and let's fill this hole at the back here. Now we're going to add some loop cuts like this so that we can delete one side of the object. And we're going to use a mirror modifier so that everything we do on one side is also copied onto the other side. Now we have to select all the edges which have to be a little bit sharper. So use Alt right click and Shift Alt right click to select all of this type of shit. Once you select some of them, it might help you to press Shift G and select similar face angles. We don't want to bevel this edge on top, so we're going to deselect that. I also don't want to bevel this down here, so I'm going to deselect that. But I am going to bevel all this shit in the back here, and I am going to bevel this part on top here. We're also going to select all of this in the front. And now let's use Control-B to add a tiny bevel here. The bevel needs to have a shape of one and has to have two segments. Now make sure you don't have any overlapping in your geometry. You might want to move some of your geometry a little bit further apart. And if you don't like the shape of this thing on top here, you can always either add more geometry and slide this around or just slide this around a little bit like this. 
although this is going to work a lot better after you apply your mirror modifier. So let's bring the mirror modifier above the subdivision surface modifier. We're going to apply it with control A. Now we can slide this around or move it around a little bit to get a better curve up here on top. So we can now use this curve to create these other metal parts behind the handguard in the front over here. But now we're going to select this entire surface back here, duplicate with Shift D and separate to new object. We can get rid of this edge loop down here because we don't need it. Then extrude this backwards a little bit like this. We're going to add a loop cut like this and bevel it so that we tighten up the corners. Then we're going to apply one level of subdivision and now we can get rid of some of the edge loops that we really don't need here. Then we're going to add a little cylinder on the inside over here that can have just 16 vertices. We're going to flip it sideways and this is where the handguard connects with the iron sight over here. We can delete the lower half of that. This part is not going to be visible so it doesn't really matter where you place it. And this one we're going to bring inwards like this. We're going to have to scale it down a little bit so it doesn't stick outside of this shape. And then we can extrude these edges downwards. Object, shade, smooth and this is ready to go. And in the front here we're just going to do the same shit. We're going to select some geometry like this. Duplicate that and separate. Apply one level of subdivision. And we have some really shitty geometry over here so we can just delete most of that. You can dissolve most of these edges because you're not going to need them down here anyway. And you can even fill all this shit with endgons. And now extrude this forwards a little bit. Make sure you give it the right thickness. Object shade smooth. And it's up to you whether you want to fill this with an end gon or whether you want to give it a grid fill. I'm trying to keep the number of polygons a little bit lower, so I'm going to use just an end gon. In the back here, I'll inset this a little bit and I'll delete the faces. And the front here, I'm just going to extrude them and scale them down on individual origins because I don't want to have any overlapping here. Then I'll add two loop cuts like this, control B to bevel them. And that controls my shading a little bit better. That's it, the handguard model is ready. Now we just have to texture it. Now to texture this, we're going to use the same materials that we use in the rest of this gun. We already have a wood texture and we already have a gunmetal texture. So once we UV unwrap this, the rest is going to be pretty easy. We have to apply any modifiers that are still active on these objects. I only had a subdivision surface modifier on the main wooden shape, but if you got anything else, make sure to apply that. We can also join all of this into the same object, so we're going to select all the metal bits, and we're going to select the wooden part last, and with Control J, we're going to turn those into the same object. Now, if we want to unwrap these wooden parts, it's going to be easier if we lift this part up a little bit, then we're going to lower another part and so on. And we're going to mark all the sharp edges in the front, the sharp edges at the bottom here, and we're selecting all of these with shift alt right click we're also going to mark these edges down here at the bottom and once we've done that this should uv unwrap pretty nicely so press ctrl e mark seam and let's pull out our uv test material and apply that to this object so now we can go to material preview viewport shading select everything press u to uv unwrap this and as you can see this is uv mapped pretty well we're going to do the same thing at the bottom the lower object is essentially a reflection of the upper one it's just shaped slightly differently, but you can mark all the same equivalent edges on the lower shape as we did on the upper shape. So Control E, Mark Seam. Once everything is marked, press U and UV Unwrap. As you can see, that worked pretty well as well. On these little frontal details over here, we're just going to separate the front and the back surfaces. Then we're going to make some horizontal cuts like this. This shape back here is going to be very simple. We're unwrapping it essentially the same way that we would unwrap a cube. We don't have to mark anything on this because this can just be bent into a flat surface. And now we're going to lift this piece up. We're going to mark these edge loops as seams. And we're going to make a cut up here and also down here. Now you unwrap. And as you can see, there's no twisting, there's no distortion, there's no bending on any of the shapes. So we can just bring these back into place and now everything is properly UV unwrapped. Now, first of all, we're going to remove all the materials from this object. Then we're going to create a new material, which is going to be called hand guard wood. Let's give that a temporary color, like something brown to represent wood. Then we're going to select the other objects, which are supposed to be metal. And we're going to create a new material slot, create a new material, name that hand guard metal, assign that to those parts and also give those a temporary gray color. Now we have to bring our image textures into these materials. So let's start with the wood. So we can just drag and drop some images into the material over here. In the first episode of this series, I showed you how and where I got these materials from. And this is why you gotta watch that shit if you want this to make more sense. Now just plug the color into the base color, plug the roughness into the roughness, and run the normal map through a normal map node and plug that into the normal input of the principal node. As you can see, now we have a beautiful texture on our material, but I'm going to select this object at the bottom here. But I'm going to have to take this island over here and rotate it by 90 degrees. And I'm also gonna rotate the entire thing by 90 degrees. And now both of these lines are running in the same direction. Then we're going to go to the metal material and we're gonna load in an albedo map, a roughness map, and a normal map. So plug the albedo into the base color, set the roughness to non-color and plug that into roughness. 
crank the metallic value all the way up and then add another normal map node plug the color into color normal into normal and you can adjust the strength to make sure this isn't too rough now the hand guard is ready to go in the next episode we're gonna make the iron sight in the front here so make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you want to see that episode and check out the fucking ebook everything i ever use in blender is in there and i still got a discount running from patrons until orthodox christmas so drop your questions below and i'm gonna see you in the next one